When installing conduit in a plaster wall, make sure that the pipe is continuous. Generally, you can use metal pipe in this situation, but you should be sure to follow the wiring regulations to ensure that the wires are earthed. Also, long runs of metal conduit may be too brittle for proper operation of overcurrent devices, so be sure to follow these regulations carefully. To prevent any mishaps or problems, you should avoid cutting the wires or leaving them unprotected. Before installing your conduit, make sure to determine the size of the pipes used. The pipes should be able to accommodate the size and number of wires required. Failing to account for these factors will result in excessive strain when pulling cables through the pipe. In addition, it will damage the insulation of the cables. To avoid this problem, you should always use a saddle with a reversible base that enables you to adjust the saddle and reuse it if necessary. Conduit wiring comes in two basic varieties, concealed and surface. In the former, the cables are run through steel or PVC conduit pipes. The latter is used to connect heavy motors. While surface conduit wiring is more common in residential areas, concealed conduit wiring is best for heavy electrical appliances. It looks neat and is the safest way to wire a wall. If you are unsure of which type of wires you'll need in a new home, consider the following. For indoor applications, insulated conduit is the safest choice. The metal conduit is made from aluminum or steel and can carry electricity and withstand high temperatures. For outdoor installations, you'll need special waterproof fittings. When installing electrical conduit, it is a good idea to use a flexible or rigid metal pipe. This material is ideal for indoor use, but can be expensive if you are working with a lot of power. There are two types of conduit wiring. The low temperature type is suitable for outdoor installations and is ideal for hot or cold environments. It's a good choice if you're wiring in a room where temperatures fluctuate. Nevertheless, low temperature conduits can be vulnerable to chemical and mechanical effects, so it is better to install conduits in an indoor location that is protected by weather-resistant wires. If your walls are too hot, you should use copper insulated wires. Conductor wiring is another type of wiring. The surface type is done on the outside of the wall and is done with GI clamps. It's usually a two-man job, and the wires should be positioned the same way inside the conduit. Then, you should install the conduits inside the wall if you want to keep the insulation intact. If you don't have a waterproofing barrier, you should install plastic or metal pipe. In the case of outdoor wiring, it's important to consider the future. Unlike the indoor wiring system, in-loop wiring requires a joint between two pieces of wire, in-loop wiring is flexible and easy to trace. The length of the wires in the conduit will depend on the size of the pipe. You can also choose to use veer wire, which is a braided material. The veer wire is generally more durable than the PVC wire and is suitable for outdoor installations. Conduit wiring is a waterproof, watertight, and insulated wire. This type of wiring is best suited for interior wiring. The electrical wiring in the walls can be easily repaired if it's plugged into the wall. The conduit between the boxes and wires should be secured with fish tape. Once the wires are in place, the fish tape should be pulled through the raceway to prevent a fire from escaping. Typically, cable wiring is limited to two or three standard combinations of wire sizes. The conduit can handle several wire sizes and gauges in a single run. Using 6 No. 14 wires would require a 3 4 inch inch run, while 4 No. 14 wires would require a 2 inch long run. This is not the only benefit to using conduit in a home. Most homes will have one or more wire sizes in a single wall. 